Welcome back. In the last video, I showed you everything about modeling, sculpting, and cleaning off all the details of your model when it comes to 3D space or geometry. In this video, I want to show you how you get from that to clean and contrasty textures. Follow along, use the timestamps to switch around, and I hope you have fun. If the face looks weird to you, even if it's your own, that's quite normal. You're just ugly. Uh, I mean, a face without color always looks weird. Here's an example of me without texture. After scurrying you for life and haunting your dreams for the next few weeks with this picture, let's move on to the next step of the tutorial. Surface texture. If you cleaned up your scan to print via FDM or any other technology that only prints in one color, you're finished here. I told you at the beginning that we will lose all our textures as soon as we start to use sculpting tools. So now it's time to bring color back into our life. The reason why we duplicated our file at the beginning is so that we can now transfer the textures from the original model to our new and improved model. But before we can tackle that, we have to do a step in between. Surface textures are saved as flat images that are basically wrapped around your model. So we have to give the program a few guidelines. If we just wrap wildly, the image will distort and stretch and the textures will be awful. So what we need to do is to divide our model into sections and tell that program where the seams are and where it can cut the textures to unwrap it. Sounds complicated? Because it is. It's fairly simple. Go to edit mode. Here on the top left, choose tweak. Now we want to bring up our UV editor in a second window. To open a new window in Blender, simply hover your mouse on the top left corner of the screen, click and track and a second window will appear. Here, switch to UV editor. You can also do that step later because we finished this operation first before we use the editor. Now, with this tool activated, start drawing your seams. Simply click on the edge, then when shift held down, Click to the next edge and Blender will automatically try to connect those two edges with a line that is as straight as possible. Make sure that your line does not go too much in wild curves and bends on the way. That can really mess up your unwrapping. Go in short increments and try to mark an edge that faces the same way as the previous one. You can see in here an example of a very bad seam. Blender will not know what you wanted to do with that and will fail to produce the whole patch. For these seams, you can simply take inspiration from clothing. Clothing is nothing else than flat sheets of fabric cut into slices that are easy to wrap around your body. See the connection there? No? It's like the same thing I said about the UV map. The texture wraps around... Ugh, damn, I give up. For the people that are not as slow as that guy... I'm not slow, I'm fast. Follow the area where you see stitches. For example, in between your legs, on top of your shoulders, below your arms, etc. I like to hide the seams on the inside where you can't see the transitions. The texture will be seamless, but sometimes you can see slight color variations after, for example, color grading your texture. So it's better to have the seams hidden. Try to divide your model into those patches as accurately as you can. Being precise here keeps a lot of trouble away down the line. For everything that isn't close, just think about taking your surface and flatten it. Everything that would be needed to squish or stretch should be divided. For example, the hair and the face should be two different areas. Here I take inspiration of how shoes are made. The top and the bottom are two separate parts. I also split it down the middle. To set the seam, you simply, when you finish marking the seams, press right click and choose Mark Seam. It will now be permanently marked on the model. You can also unmark seam or clear seam to delete a set of seams if you, for example, have two sharp edges. After you're happy with your seams, somehow a weird thing to say, you now need to unwrap those patches into flat surfaces. For that, go to your cupboard, get out your flattening iron, go to the menu here, choose UV and surprise, surprise, unwrap. This can take a while to calculate. When it finishes, your model will look weird. Textures everywhere, but all of them in the wrong place. 
don't panic, that's normal. It unwraps your model on the original texture map that is divided completely wrong. So we first have to disconnect the texture from the model. This can be done easily by clicking on the two shown in the top right corner. You can highlight the unwrapped parts by clicking into the model and press A to mark all. Now we check if we did a good job in dividing the model. Click here and choose Select Overlap. There should only be very little to no marking on the map. If you have a lot, you need to do smaller patches. If it is okay, we want to add a new blank texture to fill. Click the symbol for new here, name it texture and set a size. I like to do a 8K texture for detail. Go lower if your computer isn't that good. You should now have a black background. Let's check with how many faces we work. Nah, that's a bit much. It will slow us down and it is unnecessary. So let's do a quick decimate to a manageable triangle count. You have to be in sculpting mode for that. I aim for about half a million triangles. You can go way lower if you like. For that, you simply go to Add Modifier, Decimate, and then you play around with the ratio till you're happy. Let's get some space between those patches, so we have it easier to color correct them later. Also, sometimes the patches are slightly out of the picture. For that, go to UV and then Pack Islands. After that, it is a good idea to minimize stretch. Open up a new window by going to the top right corner and dragging in a new window. If you don't know how you do that, you didn't pay attention earlier, you little... What the heck? Here we go to the texture shader editor. We delete the input that is here. Add a new texture with add texture image texture. Choose the texture you created for the patches. Now connect the color to the base color by clicking and tracking it. Now we need to swell up our clean model to make it a little big. We can use a modifier for that. Go to object mode. With your clean part highlighted, go to add modifier, shrink wrap. Choose above surface and as a target, choose the original model we kept. The one you did not work on. I, again, was too dumb to have that in frame. As offset, choose between 20 and 80 micrometers by dragging your mouse. When in a later step, the texture does not transfer in some places, that is the setting you want to play around with. You know it's correct when the model looks a little like somebody wanted to go for some honey that was still in the bee. Now it is time to finally transfer the textures. Make sure that your original model is visible and also clickable, just in case you deactivated that at the beginning. You deactivated that at the beginning. First thing we need to do is to change the render engine. Go to the camera symbol, in Render Engine choose Cycles. Scroll down till you see Bake. This tutorial is so long, we will now make some cake because I'm hungry. In the Bake type, choose Diffusion. Check Diffusion to Active. Now, very important, we have to highlight our model in the correct sequence. Click on the original model first and then on your cleaned model. The original should be highlighted in a darker orange. On ray distance, I normally choose around 2 to 5 millimeters. To explain that a little bit, the max ray distance is how far from the original model the program looks for the new model to place down the color. This looking is done by a ray or a beam. The beam emanates from the surface in both directions and remembers all collisions with other surfaces and puts its information on it, in that case, the color. So you can imagine if you set it to one meter, then the color from the face, for example, will be also projected to the back hat of the figure. So choose the setting in according to the size of your model. Most people don't have industrial 3D printers at home. That's why I'm excited to announce our partnership with one of the most competitively priced and high quality manufacturers out there, PCBWay. PCBWay is very renowned for their PCB manufacturing capabilities. They also offer industrial grade 3D printing and with worldwide shipping, it will show up within days on your doorstep. If you want to get your 3D scan printed, give PCBWay a try. So let's continue with the tutorial. Now press Bake. This might take a while. Et voila! Your model has now textures again. Sometimes you have a bad transfer. We try to keep black spots down by playing with the settings, but sometimes that does not help. So I will show you how to clean these errors out of your texture. Switch to Texture Paint Mode. 
Here on the left side, you have some of the same tools as you have it in picture editors like Photoshop. I personally love to use the cloning tool. So I don't think I have to go into too much detail on how to process now. Use the painting tool to copy areas of your texture that have the same color, shadow, light than other areas you're trying to repair. Especially on hair, because these are kind of reflective. The color is off a lot. Use copy to paint to the correct color around the model. After you're done, export your 3D model as an OBJ using data export. This creates a 3D model and an MTL file. The texture picture you have to export yourself. For that, simply go to image, save as in the texture window. Make sure that you keep the name as is because it's referenced in your MTL file. You can now import the picture into GIMP or Photoshop or some other programs for color correction. Don't overdo this though. If you change contrast and colors too much, the seams where the patches touch each other will be visible. I like to reduce shadows, increase contrast, and do some general color correcting. As soon as you export the picture in the same name, you can open the OBJ file with any file viewer and see the result immediately. I always keep a copy of the original texture to be able to restart. And there you have it, a complete post-processed 3D scan. I know it's a lot of work, but it makes a huge difference. The difference between a professional 3D scan and homemade ones. Let's get this figurine printed. I use the CJP technology here. CJP means color jet printing. It works by printing ink with a binder onto 0.1 millimeter thick layers of plaster of Paris powder. Layer by layer, the model is created. Then I simply take it out of the print bed and depowder it. To make it stable, I dip it into an infiltrate that is basically like super close. If you would like to see more about that technology, let me know and I will do a video on that. Scanning objects is easy. Wanna know how you can 3D scan the inside of your body? Then you can watch the video displayed here, where I made a 3D model of my real skull using CBCT scanners and specialized software. Otherwise, why not watch another video? Consider subscribing for more awesome builds and education.